Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the epistle lesson, Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, encourage you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Paul was arrested in 58, so he would not be left to the Jewish mob that had formed at the temple. He subsequently spent a year and a half in Caesarea and then enjoyed two years of house arrest in Rome. Prison is not a fun and happy place. It strips you of your freedom and your time belongs to someone else. They make the decisions. You get to follow along. Paul is bound in Rome, stripped of freedom, because he refused to back down from the gospel. Paul could not stop doing it because he was a prisoner and a bondservant of someone else. He already had a master to whom he belonged. The words he spoke were not his own. They were given to him to hand over to all who needed the forgiveness of sins. Being a prisoner of Christ was something that was given to him. He didn't make the choice on his own. He, like you, could not by his own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ as Lord or come to him. The Holy Spirit called him by the gospel, enlightened him with his gifts, sanctified and kept him in the true faith. These gifts were given to him. His sins were drowned and died. Faith was given and Paul was born into the body of Christ. This made Paul a new man. Christians are not called to do something. Let me say that again and listen carefully. You are not called by God to do something. The world and false Christians have tried to cram this down our gullet, and they don't have to try too hard. We love the sweet taste of being able to cross off the checklist. We can't wait to hear a pastor tell us, this is what you have to do. It gives us a purpose and a goal. We can measure our success and point out others' failure. It's a perfect recipe for me to do the things and feel good about myself or to not do them and play the victim card of how unfair life is to me. God does not care about your actions. He cares about your person. He does not call you to do something. He calls you to be someone. You are a slave, a bondservant. You have a master. By faith, it is the one true God. This Paul rightly understands. And so, as a prisoner, he is able to say, I urge. Now, to the English ear, this sounds like doing. The connotation of the word is better understood as encourage or comfort. Here again, I comfort you to walk. To walk is a deep Old Testament thing. Walking is the Old Testament image of the life of faith. God is all about talking the talk and walking the walk. Your words and your actions are to line up. Which God do you serve? Do people see it from your mouth and hear it from your hands? So what is the calling to which you have been called? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. You have not worked your way to become a part of this faith. You have not worked to keep the peace among your brothers and sisters in Christ. These gifts are given. The unity of the Christian church is not something for which we work towards. It is a given gift. The unity of the church is something that is to be held onto. The church is by its very nature one, holy, united, undivided, and indivisible. It is the communion of saints where two or three are gathered in his name. Jesus is there. The body gathers and the head Speaks. There is nothing we Christians can do to establish or create the unity of the church. How can we unify Jesus? Is he not already unified? Do we think that we are stronger than him and that he needs us to unify his own body for him? Let it not be so. This is the work of God, the Holy Spirit himself. He gives it. We hold on to it. The large catechism confesses, this is the sum and substance of this phrase. I believe that there is on earth a little holy flock or community of pure saints under one head, Christ. It is called together by the Holy Spirit in one faith, mind, and understanding. It possesses a variety of gifts, yet 
is united in love without sect or schism. To be in the body of Christ is to be given unity of mind and spirit. This is where we see our sinful pride and self-made, self-serving God still in action. We are quick to divide ourselves into all sorts of factions. We take great, great pride in ourselves. How easy it is to see the failings of others and retort, well, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, if they were face down on their pillow, they wouldn't have sense enough to turn their head to breathe. We look out for number one. I'm the king of my castle, and that spills into the street. As a servant of Christ, two things are immediately given. Humility and unity. Now, there's a popular notion, albeit a false one, that claiming to have the truth is sinful pride. I cannot count how many times I've been confronted with something like, you insist that you have the truth. How arrogant. God tells us not to be prideful, Pastor, and you are asserting only one truth. You are a prideful, mean-spirited, devil-worshipping bully, and that is just your interpretation. Now, that's the clean version. But to claim the truth will bring accusations of inflexibility and intolerance. Now, first things first, we must get away from the word interpretation. There is not another's interpretation. There are translations, but there is only one interpretation. God gave his word in human language at times when there was only a language everyone would know. It was a common language of the people. I know it's not the same language today, but God gave his word so that even a child could read it and be strengthened in their faith. His word is meant to be read and heard and faith strengthened, which means that sins are realized and gospel is given. These are not words to be toyed around with. These are not words that can be disposed of when they become uncomfortable. These are not my playthings. These are God's gifts. These words belong to the whole community of saints. The liturgy which simply reads and sings the word of God belong to the whole church. They're not simply to be disposed of on a whim. The word of God and his holy sacraments are unifying gifts given to us that we take great care to hold on to tightly. We are servants of Christ. What else can we do? Now, brothers and sisters, these are dad's words. When it comes to his words, we must be intolerant and inflexible. We have no right to tolerate any other teaching that goes against the word of God. If you don't know what it says, read it. Don't only read it alone. Your sinful nature may come to all sorts of self-justifying conclusions. Be constant in study and prayer, which begins in the word of God. Be constant in fellowship with the communion of saints, because as his servants, they live as you. Now, what does that mean? They too are sinners. They are weak and frail. They err and are selfish. The sinful nature be bests them and but it does not define them. We can tolerate their weaknesses. We have a few of our own. The very center of God's mercy is the reality that we are forgiven freely for Christ's sake. When this precious pearl is placed before us, we can see the precious saint that God has placed before us, and we can live in gentleness and patience with them. We can put up with erring siblings. We cannot put up with erring doctrine. To put up with false doctrine, even just a little, is an attack on faith. It divides the reality of the body into which we have been placed. This body has been crucified. It has borne all failures and sickness, all disease and pain, all selfish backstabbing and bitter biting. It has carried upon its shoulders the darkness of sin, the pain of God's wrath, and the eternal burden of death. It has taken these things upon itself, and with these things, it has been nailed to the cross. The body of Christ has suffered, been crucified, died, and was buried. The same body of Christ has been risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. This same body of Christ is to what you now belong. There is one baptism, one washing, one birth into this holy family of God. 
You who were born a slave to sin are now born a slave to righteousness, a child of the Most High God. This washing brings you in the one body with the one spirit. The large catechism confesses, Of this community I also am a part and member, a participant and co-partner in all the blessings it possesses. I was brought to it by the Holy Spirit and incorporated into it through the fact that I have heard and still hear God's word, which is the first step in entering it. Before we had advanced this far, we were entirely of the devil, knowing nothing of God and of Christ. Until the last day, the Holy Spirit remains with the holy community or Christian people. Through it, he gathers us, using it to teach and preach the word. By it, he creates and increases sanctification, causing it daily to grow and become strong in the faith and in the fruits of the Spirit. Further, we believe that in this Christian church, we have the forgiveness of sins, which is granted through the holy sacraments and absolution, as well as through all the comforting words of the entire gospel. Toward forgiveness is directed everything that is to be preached concerning the sacraments and, in short, the entire gospel and all the duties of Christianity. Forgiveness is needed constantly, for although God's grace has been won by Christ and holiness has been wrought by the Holy Spirit through God's word and the unity of the Christian church, yet because we are encumbered with our flesh, we are never without sin. Therefore, everything in the Christian church is so ordered that we may daily obtain full forgiveness of sins through the word and through signs appointed to comfort and revive our consciences as long as we live. Although we have sin, the Holy Spirit sees to it that it does not harm us because we are in the Christian church where there is full forgiveness of sin. God forgives us and we forgive, bear with, and aid one another. This is who we are called to be. We are members of the body of Christ. We have been given forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. We have been given unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I know my faith is founded on Jesus Christ, my God and Lord. And this, my faith confessing, unmoved I stand on His sure word. Our reason cannot fathom the truth of God profound who trusts in human wisdom relies on shifting ground. God's word is all-sufficient. It makes divinely sure, and trusting in its wisdom, my faith shall rest secure. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.